With just a couple basic bolt-on modifications, we can more than double the amount of power that these engines produce. <laughs> Hey everyone, Jake from 8020 Automotive here. Today we are talking about performance modifications for the Volkswagen 1.9 liter TDI ALH engine. This engine is a 1.9 liter turbo diesel that produces a blistering 90 horsepower and 155 torque from the factory. It came out in 1999 and was used in the Mark IV Volkswagen Golf and Jetta until 2003 and a half and was also used in the new Volkswagen Beetle back starting in 1999 as well. Now, these engines don't produce a ton of power from the factory, but they get fantastic fuel economy and with just a couple basic bolt-on modifications, we can more than double the amount of power that these engines produce and still get over 50 miles per gallon. So starting off with power potential and the limitations of this engine, all the numbers that I'm talking about are gonna be crank horsepower, not wheel horsepower. The block, the internals can handle about 230 to 250 horsepower. So once you start pushing right up around that 250 horsepower mark is when you start to run into the likelihood of experiencing bent rods. To push beyond 250 horsepower and respectably 350 to maybe 380 plus torque, that's when you're gonna to need to start looking at more significant engine upgrades to be able to support those power levels. The stock turbocharger on the 1.9 TDI is the VNT15, and that's gonna cap out right around the 150 horsepower mark. The fueling is gonna be one of the biggest limitations on this engine. Pretty much right after you try to push up closer to that 150 horsepower mark is when you're gonna to need to do injector nozzles. You can't make it too much further from stock power levels without going ahead and doing that. And then on your manual transmission vehicles, the clutch is also a weak point. Once you start pushing beyond 200 to 225 foot pounds of torque is when you start to run into a clutch limitation. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the best performance upgrades you can do to a 1.9 TDI. First, we're gonna start off with what I'm gonna call kind of a mild upgrade. Really the biggest modification here is gonna be engine tuning. You can get just a simple plug and play tuner drop it in and get about 30 or so horsepower gains and somewhere around 50 to maybe 60 torque gains. That's gonna be pretty close to as far as you can push these engines without going ahead and doing injector upgrades. If you go the custom tuning route, you might be able to get a little bit more out of it, but custom tuning makes a little bit more sense to do once you have all of your other modifications done. So that's really my only thing in this kind of first bucket. And that's ultimately gonna cost you somewhere around three to $500, depending on the route. You go. If you want to push things beyond kind of that 120 horsepower limit, so this is where we are either talking about maxing out the stock turbocharger or doing a moderate turbocharger upgrade to be able to handle a little bit of additional power capacity. Here we're first going to need tuning. The second thing we're going to need is larger injector nozzles to be able to supply more fuel. And then from there, the third thing that we're going to need is an upgraded clutch for manual transmission vehicles as well. With those three things, you can either max out the stock turbocharger right around the 150 horsepower mark, or from here, you have the option of upgrading to a slightly larger and more power capable turbocharger. And the most common route to go with this is to upgrade to the VNT17, which is just a slightly larger version of the VNT15. If you do that, you'll be able to get up to right around the 180-ish horsepower mark. Just an additional thing that I'm gonna throw out here from a supporting modification, you could opt for an intercooler and you could do some exhaust upgrades. Generally, both of these are things that you don't quite need to do at these power levels. You can wait until you go with a larger turbocharger upgrade. The next bucket that we have is going beyond 180, up until right around probably that 225 horsepower limit that we want to avoid going beyond to not risk bending a rod. From here, the things that we're gonna need, of course, are tuning. We're gonna need a clutch upgrade. We're gonna need larger nozzles. And another thing from a fueling standpoint too is if you have a manual transmission, you only have a 10 millimeter injection pump 
The automatic vehicles came with an 11 millimeter injection pump, so it is common to swap the 11 millimeter injection pump into the manual transmission vehicles just to get a little bit of additional fuel flow and power out of your injection pump. After that, we're gonna need a larger turbocharger. It's common to go with the GTB turbochargers, either the 2056 for slightly lower power capacity or going all the way up to the 2260 if you're looking to push closer to that 225 horsepower limit. And then at this point, is when it starts to make sense to do the intercooler and the exhaust upgrades as well. Adding an intercooler is going to be great for a performance, reliability, and consistency standpoint. And then the exhaust is where we'll start to see some good power gains from reducing back pressure within the exhaust system. And then as a supporting modification here, you will need to get a different map sensor as the factory map sensor is going to limit boost pressure. So as we start to look at pushing higher boost pressures, you will need to upgrade the map sensor. This might also need to be done at the previous bucket it, even with just a VNT 17 depending on the boost levels that you're trying to hit. It still isn't the most expensive to do depending on the setup you're looking at. It could be around 2500 to maybe 4000 or 4500 dollars. Ultimately it's not super expensive to get these engines to pretty solid power numbers. And then of course there is what happens after 225 horsepower. If you really want to you can push one of these setups to 250 but like I mentioned you start to run into issues with the internals on the engine. So a common thing to do for people that are really looking to push the envelope from a performance standpoint is to upgrade to the ARL engine block, which is the engine that came in the PD150, which is the newer version of the 1.9 TDI. So to push beyond 225 or so reliably, we're looking at block upgrades, internal upgrades, a lot more kind of fueling related upgrades, larger turbochargers, then we can start getting into crankshafts and other things. So ultimately it gets relatively complex. And so we're gonna go ahead and save all that for later. That covers it for our video on modifications for the 1.9 TDI ALH. If you guys appreciate this video, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for all our future Audi and Volkswagen content.